Greetings. Welcome to So Much to Talk About 2010 NBA Draft. My pleasure to have Mr. Doug Gottlieb of ESPN. Pleasure to have you. Amante, good to see you again, man. Yeah, pleasure to see you. Definitely. And uh, well, I, I would love to interview you for 30 minutes, 40 minutes about this draft and really dissect it. But um, I'll definitely keep it short for sure. I know you're busy. But I wanted to ask you about now, John Wall, we all know about him, of right. course. But, and last year was a point guard heavy draft. Right. You know, definitely around 10 point guards to draft in the first round. So, um, what other point guards do you think can uh, be contributors to this league? Well, you know, uh, Avery Bradley's not really a point, he's not really a two, but he'll play a lot of point in the pros. Um, you know, ESPN, you had him the number one player in the country. I thought that was a little high for high school, but he's, he's still, I, I think there's a guy that'll be starting in the league at some point. Uh, definitely, he's like the perfect six man they have because he can play both positions he's obviously very good defensively could eventually be kind of like a Bobby Jackson type role player and then there's Eric Bledsoe who's kind of like a like a Russell Westbrook where uh, point guard in high school didn't play the point in college but a ridiculous athlete who has to learn how to run a team and then I think Gravis Vasquez is a guy who he's you know he's got to learn to guard somebody and he's got to learn to not be such a high you know volume shooter I mean look when you're a backup point guard trying to He's got to be more facilitator, but he's really creative. He's big, tall, can't steal the ball from him, and uh, he can make big shots. I, so those are probably some of the top guys. Um, you know, Willie Warren's trying to become a point guard. Tariqa White's a combo guard to come off the bench. But no, you're right. When you nailed it. Last year was point guard heavy. This year is really four man heavy, uh, big guy heavy. And it's really interesting how polar opposites the two, year, the two years are. James Anderson, a fellow Oklahoma State brethren, uh, what do you think about his skill set in the next? Well, you know, I don't, know, I don't think he'd be a star, but I think he's ready to play right now. He can really shoot and um, he can defend his position, score a little bit off the dribble. And the thing I like best about him is he's not a big ego guy. If he only gets ten shots, five shots, whatever coming in, it's not going to be a big adjustment for him. Whereas a lot of these other guys have been not just stars like he was at the college level, but uh, they're from the type of backgrounds where they're always just trying to get theirs. That's not him. And uh, I think he's, they got to be very care, uh, cautious where they draft him because he is a quiet kid from the south, from a small town in Arkansas. But with the right fit, and again, not as a star player, I think he's ready to start in the NBA. I want to ask you, uh, name some sleepers, some possible second round, late second rounders or free agents that can uh, that could definitely uh, you know, make a roster and, and contribute 20 minutes a game. You know, a guy I like in the second round or maybe late first is Smarto Samuel of Louisville. Um, you know, it's kind of become it's kind of become in vogue to draft these undersized big guys in the second second round, more so than like a Trevor Booker who also go in the second round. But um, I think those guys are more explosive athletically. They they're better in the low post than like a Luke Herringote is, and uh, you know I, I like them as kind of the sleeper type. I think Andy Routens could make a team. Uh, you know, as a specialist come in, very good shooter. Yeah, um, you know, he's not as big as Capono, but he's a very good passer, better all-around player than Capono was uh, coming out of UCLA. So I, I, mean, I think you got a couple of those guys. And then there's a French kid who could go first, could go early second. Uh, his name is Kevin Serafin, and he's six foot eight, 250 pounds, kind of built, not as long arms as a Dewan Blair, but that type of build, that type of scoring ability around the basket, a little bit better vertically. And I got a chance to see him play on tape uh, in Montana. I thought he was, he was very, very good. So he may not come over this year. He may be stashed away for a year, but uh, he's somebody that can play, that can be kind of a sleeper, a guy people haven't heard of. We're going to go, uh, now we're going to go next year, around this time. Yeah. Um, which three to five players do you think um, will be able to be have their name called in the lottery? Uh, well, there's a kid named... Uh, uh, Ennis Cantor, who's going to Kentucky, he may or may not play some eligibility issues. He's actually from Turkey originally. Uh, a seven-foot face-up four-man who's just an unbelievable talent. Um, I, you know, I think th there's a guy that'll be a top-five pick. I think John Henson, who's returning for his sophomore year at Carolina, got to put on some size, some strength. But if you saw Henson the last five games of the year for the Tar Heels, you know that uh, he's kind of got that special something to which uh, he'll grow into that body, grow into those ridiculously long arms. And uh, I, kind of like uh, Luke Babbitt this year, I think Kyle Singler is going to be a ready-made product for the pros. I don't think he'll be a star in the pros, but I think a darn good player who can come in and play the three. He's six foot eight, six foot nine, uh, maybe six foot seven, but he's he's got a little bit of a dirk to his game, got a little Dunleavy to his game, got some toughness to his game. So the first two are more upside guys. Singler, I don't think he'll be a top five pick, but I think he'll be next year's Babbitt, where guys will be raving about just how well-rounded his game is. For him to stay as yeah. well, you know, it's a good move. Well, you know, I mean, look, you have to do what you want to do. You know, it's, it's his life. He could have come out here and he would have been drafting the NBA draft. 
I'm not sure it affects his draft position much. He'd probably be mid first round this year, mid first round next year, uh, especially considering how well he played at the end of the season. But you know, you only get a chance to be a kid and be in college once. And uh, if your if your family financially can wait one more year to get the paycheck, God bless you. It's another championship because Duke is definitely in favor. <laughs> no doubt, definitely in the conversation. Thank you for your time My and honor to have you on so much to talk about. My pleasure.